Hello and welcome to this Diwali special. Samwat 2080 has been absolutely fantastic. A near 30% rise in the Nifty since last Diwali. The freight train of local retail money into the markets looks unstoppable. We are tracking now $4 billion a month into equity mutual fund schemes every month. On the fundamental side, India remains the fastest growing economy globally and is riding on multiple levers of demographic dividend, huge domestic market, make in India, unicorns, infrastructure development, and so on. The question, though, is what will Sambat 2081 hold for stock markets? I have with me someone who has all the answers. Manish Chokani of Inam Holdings is with me. <laughs> I have all the answers. <laughs> Manish, great to have you with us here. Season greetings and wish you a very happy Diwali. Thanks for having me. Uh, I, I want to start by, uh, as, and we'll get to the answers later, sure. but just, I mean, something which is going on, which is this FII is selling what we've seen. I just want to start with that. What's going on? I mean, it's been almost $8 billion a month to date. It's the fourth largest episode of outflow for, for, from true. foreigners yeah, ever. A bit like 2008, except yeah. the base is di very different. Much, much larger. We're we are three, three and a half times of Absolutely. that time. Uh, and also <laughs> the fact that there's a lot of domestic money, otherwise this would have been a deeper correction. Yeah. But having said that, foreigners own 15-16% of India. So yeah. it's about $800 billion at least yeah. of stock which they have. Yeah. So they've sold $10 billion. It's like poor chaps have you know, traded 1% of what they hold. We shouldn't be grudging them that. In the context, in the last six months alone, we've raised $30 billion in our markets. Yeah. Of which 15 has come from companies raising it for building new capacities or whatever. Right. But 15 has actually been promoter and private equity selling. Right. In cashing stock. In cashing stock. Mm -hmm. And this promoters include the foreigners from all over the world, like right? the strategics like G and Whirlpool have sold from US, mm -hmm. BAT and uh, Vodafone have sold from UK, mm -hmm. Sumitomo has sold from Japan, mm -hmm. Hyundai and soon Samsung will sell from Korea, mm -hmm. Singtel has sold from Singapore, mm -hmm. and indeed even our own. Raza Sons has sold down some TCS. Sure. Anil Agarwal has sold down Vedanta. Mm. So people realize there's a you know, good value being provided by the market. Why not take it? When people sell and take money home, mm. like it happened in the early 2000s when Warburg Pinkers and Cash Bharti, it opened the floodgates mm. uh, to private equity in India. Mm. So if this sort of selling can get absorbed. Mm. It creates confidence that this is actually a two-way street. Mm. I'm not trapped like I'm in China or in Africa, mm. where I can come in, but I can never leave. Mm. So it may not be a bad thing. And we did need the market to cool off. When will they stop leaving is the question, <laughs> though. And why are they leaving? I mean, foreigners especially. What's, what's your but sense? That's why I gave you the context is if you have 800 billion mm. and you take 10 billion home, they're not leaving. But it's just that they're it's very concentrated. They're tactically readjusting. Right. And the fact of the matter is... But tactically you, readjusting because of what? Because India is expensive? It is or? super expensive. I mean, right. no one's denied that. I, I think if we did not have this 50 billion of inflows from domestics, mm. I don't think anybody was arguing this is a cheap value market where you should go in and take fresh positions. Right. Everyone's happily riding the list, lifting tide. Mm. But earnings are slowing down. Mm. You've got the stimulus happening in China. Mm. You've got, hopefully now, the US having a second leg of growth. Indeed, if the markets believe mm. that Trump comes back and you get tax cuts and you get tariffs and mm. U.S. prosperity will come back, mm. uh, you have a $62 trillion market cap sitting there mm. on which if you make 10%, you still make $6 trillion. Mm. Uh, as opposed to even if you make 25% on the Indian $5 trillion, mm. uh, it, it gives you an extra trillion. So percentage gains and absolute gains play in people's minds. I'm going to come to the U.S. presidential elections in sure. just a bit, but this consumer slowdown bit, right? So one is valuations. That is the only bit, right? I mean, there's no other, is, there's that, that, nothing look, else. Look, India, let, let's think about it. That We came post-COVID mm. from a rebound perspective mm. that mm. the big themes we talked about, consumer discretionary, has played out. Mm. We talked of the platform plays with the Zomatos and the others have all played out. Mm. We talked of privatization plays, mm. which is the Adanis and the Bharatis and all have all played out. Mm. You wanted a financialization play to happen, which mm. everyone assumed is only banks. Mm. It played out in PSU capital banks and the and ICICI banks mm. and all the others. And the capital market plays have fantastically performed and, uh, you know, great wealth creation for everybody around. And then government came and stepped on the gas with mm. PLI mm. and the infrastructure spend. So it gave you the whole new fillip on PSU's defense, road, rail. Mm. And they've come like a springboard from a low mm. 
which was held back. But if you take a compounding from 2018, 19 to now, mm. the earning compounding is pretty much what it should have been mm. in the mid-teens. But the price growth and has been... And the cyclicals are the ones which have come back, which also remember the last time they had their day in the sun was 2008 bull market. Mm. So all the capital goods, industrials defense, and defense, industrials, real estate, they went nowhere from 2008 to 2021. Mm. So don't deny them their place in the sun, let mm. them enjoy a few years. Mm. Our problem as investors is we may be overpaying for it upfront, mm. which also we've spoken so many times in the past that we should be the center of a melt up in this decade. Mm. It's happened with the domestic flows. I'm underwhelmed with what's happened with the global flows. Mm. Global flows are underwe underwhelmed. underwhelmed. It's not happened. Absolutely. And even FDI, because yeah. other than the Magnificent Seven, which are generating money hand over fist, mm. it's not like the old industrials or the old consumer stocks in the world are doing well. Mm. And they all got leveled up to the hill to do buybacks mm. and reward their executives. Mm. So it's not like they're looking to expand. Mm. And then the half of manufacturing GDP of the world is around the auto industry. Mm. And they're just shell-shocked mm. with what the Chinese have done with EVs. Mm. So sure. And you see the way the uh, European chemical industry is kind of getting hollowed out and selling left, right and center. Mm. So in that mood, you're not likely to say, let me go out and expand. Mm. The expansionist tendencies and businesses are going to come out of Asia now, mm. largely. Sure. Or maybe the Middle East. Sure. Uh, so the Middle East money, I think, is still coming mm. with the sovereign funds and so on. But unfortunately, the Asians, and especially the Japanese, mm. have still not come in, in big force. Both FDI and portfolio both, flows. Both ways. So that is still pending, you would say? I think it's still pending. It's still pending. Yeah. Not just from Asia, but from the West as well, at least portfolio from the flows. West. Portfolio flows from the West, mm. FDI from Asia and uh, Middle East. Mm. I, th I think there will be significant money coming from there. But do you think we, we go in for a period of, at least from a market perspective? Uh, I pray and some, hope. I've been saying it in everything. I hate, I think we will get to a melt up at some point in this decade. I'll hate it to happen because then 20 years mm. are forgotten decades, like mm. it happened to Japan, mm. like it's happened to China. Mm. But right now, are we at a bit of an inflection kind of point right now, or no? Supply is meeting demand, mm. right? When you're seeing this kind of selling and, mm. you know, $3 billion can be paid back to Hyundai mm. uh, to take home. Mm. Uh, it's telling you supply is clearly rising to meet demand. Sure. I just hope even government and cashes and privatizers, mm. because if they can take money from the markets at three, four times of what they invested and, mm. and re-put it back to mm. creating more infrastructure and other assets, it's, it's only going to accelerate growth because remember the free pass we got after COVID mm. of inflating the fiscal deficit is now gone. Mm. Sure. And that gave us the rise of infrastructure, defense, rail spend, sure. which as you have to dial it back now for welfareism, sure. which is the need of the electoral hour now, sure. uh, you're going to get a shock on that side that the CAPEX suddenly levers are pulled back. Mm. Uh, and now the worry is that with the K-shaped recovery, the top end has gone and bought their bigger homes and their bigger cars and their holidays. Uh, what happens to the bottom of the Do you think that is the problem? It this, is a problem. Which and, is, I mean, no, clearly, it's, it's coming into stock view. The, the top end is maxed out it, in it that is, sense. It is in stock view. I, I don't think you're going to, once you bought a Mercedes, you're going to come back to the market five years later. Mm. Right? Uh, once you bought a larger home, you're coming back to the market 20 years later. And the pool of those top end homes in India is still very tiny. Mm. Like I call it Australia, Philippines and Africa. Oh. The Australians are mm. kind of happy and done. Mm. The Filipinos in the, the middle 100 million of India are, I guess, too busy making money in the market right now, whether through FNO or SME and so on. Uh, but that delayed gratification, but see, the wealth creation has been so large mm. that 85% of this $5.5 trillion is Indian wealth. Mm. And not only on that front, on real estate values are up. Real mm. estate value easily would be six, seven trillion in India. Mm. Gold value is easily two trillion dollars in India. So mm. you add all this together, bank deposits are probably a couple of trillion, if not more. So the domestic wealth creation has been large. So it's mm. not like consumption will fall off a cliff. Mm. But the rate of change which one saw, that spring which came after COVID, uh, I think... And which lasted, la lasted I mean, all, all till now. I mean, it's lasted. And I mean, when you see like someone creating like Trend did the value retail segment and they opened up with Zudio and others, mm. and others have followed. That space, which is the Filipino space, mm. I call, has just expanded dramatically. Mm. Or when Zomato tells you I can deliver you something at home for a couple of hundred bucks, mm. uh, it just expands the whole market. Mm. But it's not indefinite. And that's what I find in India, that we get excited when you know you get these inflows mm. and the mutual fund portfolios go up. But at certain point, you hit a stall speed mm. because you've gone through the Australians mm. And you've gone to the topper end of the Filipinos. Mm. And you can't keep drawing a straight line on Excel sheet and say this will continue forever. Mm. So the asset allocation mix in favor of financials is for sure. Mm. 
but this rate of consumption growth uh, is, is, is not, uh, I think, so easy. So then maybe we are in for a bit of an earnings slowdown, right? We are, Over the clearly. No one's been denying that. I, I don't think anyone in the market... But a cyclical kind of uh, slowdown yeah, which yeah, lasts yeah. how long? A year, uh, I mean... So like... you need a second wave mm. of impulses to come out. Mm. And like I said, the first impulse wave has come. Mm. The second impulse wave, normally you get a, either a catalyst by way of an important industry or an important commodity going up, mm. which probably will happen with precious metals, gold, silver and all, and there's a lot of it in India. Mm. That gives you another wealth effect and maybe another booster over there. Mm. But the government part which is lacking mm. is on jobs, regulatory reform, uh, skilling, which they're trying to do with the mm. apprenticeship thing. Which is the, which is the detail-oriented hard, hard, hard work But it's the hardest stuff. And look, the two, two, three big misses of India, which we've done really well for the last 10 years, mm. But the two, three big misses, number one on energy, mm. we've still not either drilled, mm. we've not used the nuclear treaty mm. to build as many nuclear plants as China is doing. Uh, we've not done enough on solar. We're doing a lot, but it needs to be 5x more. Mm. Like our port capacity is still, I think, one-fifth of what China has reached. So long way to catch up there. Mm. So we've caught up on you know roads and telecom. Mm. We're halfway there on airlines. Mm. But ports, power mm. is still... Youth surplus, and that's why it's a bull market in a lot of these power and transmission stocks. So, a lot of work still to be done there, number one. Number two, like I said, this whole privatization to create the animal spirits again mm. and maybe attract foreigners as well mm. is item two. Mm. Item three is my perpetual bugbear. We can keep dropping the value of the rupee, mm. but until you have FTAs in place with mm. the major trading centers of the world, you will not be part of global supply chains. Mm. You can take the rupee to 120 mm. and your exports are not going to lift off. Mm. And unless you give the price signal that rupee can even appreciate, not only depreciate, mm. what's my incentive in India to then compete on quality and product mm. uh, with the world? Mm. So these three things are the catalysts which I look for. Mm. I think privatization and Indian rupee appreciation I may carry to my grave. <laughs> We've been hoping for 20 years, but it will happen. I, I think it's <clears throat> coming. So we're waiting for wave two. Wave two, you fresh need set labor impulses. reform. Like which? Factory? I mean, out of everything that you mentioned, the easiest is another asset price in, uh, sort of asset, lift coming yeah, in from yeah, gold, yeah, silver, yeah, precious yeah. metals. You need that, and and the privatization. But don't you think that's already happened with gold and silver? I with think it's there? a break up because this debt debasement of the world currencies mm. is extraordinary. No one's paying attention to it. Mm. We are so focused on our equity markets. Mm. The amount of debt in the world is staggering. Mm. When U.S. writes a 500 billion dollar check to fund the Ukrainian war, mm. whose money is it? Mm. Our entire reserves are created at the stroke of a pen by America in a few months. Or a keyboard. What are we doing? <laughs> so why so, are we holding this? <laughs> let, let's talk about the U.S. Right. right. So uh, who's who's? So uh, by the way, on uh, debt and uh, deficits, there was a report recently which said that Trump, if he is elected, over the next decade will add seven and a half trillion dollars. Uh, any debt. politician anywhere in the world is going to add. But on the deficits. other side, uh, uh, you know, uh, Kamala Harris will add three and a half trillion dollars. So it's, I mean. So Trump is great for equity markets, expansionary, yeah. uh, but bad for bond markets. But that's the general kind of broad thinking. Yeah. Who's better for emerging markets in India, in your opinion? See, uh, again, I'm not an expert, so mm. since it's Diwali, we can but shoot we the here, breeze so a bit. It's so like, you know. true. But, so typically, the Democrats have been war mongers. It's very, very sad to say, but because they tend to be kind of moralistic that mm. we will go and support this. Mm. And the uh, Republicans, which mm. are more conservative and fiscally oriented, like this is why we're spending this money. Mm. And Trump just says it in a more blunt manner mm. that why should I be paying for Europe's war or for Taiwan's war? Mm. Let them pay their own bills. Mm. So I think if Trump comes the way the betting markets now seem to be suggesting, you get a lot of these wars wrapping up quickly. There will mm. be some negotiation and settled. Mm. But he's also a tariff guy mm. and he wants make America great again. Mm. You put tariffs up, it's inflationary. Mm. You cut taxes, it's inflationary. Mm. It's bad news for bond markets, mm. as you said. Mm. It may be great for equities in the short run, but when you get inflation, you get rising rates. Mm. And you get currencies weakening, mm. which is why the trade this decade, I still feel, is hard assets mm. and precious metals, gold, silver, uranium, and stuff like that. And uranium, silver are playing into this energy data center AI theme mm. because you need all this mm. uh, for the amount of energy these guys are going to consume. Mm. So whether it's Trump or it's Kamala Harris, dollar has to weaken, inflation has to come back, and it, it's just that the Democrats will probably let these wars linger on for longer. Mm. But but Trump is so he's he's make American stocks great again or uh, Indian stocks also fine. Oh, look when <laughs> when typically the. 
look, US is anyway 62% of world market cap. Correct. It's unsustainable. Correct. A uh, lot of these stocks, the way they are running, they are mm. now running into regulatory crosshairs as well, right? The breakup of Google and so on. Uh, also, the Europeans have woken up, Indians have woken up that mm. what about data localization and mm. so on and so forth. The flip which is happening with NVIDIA right now with this AI capex boom, mm. people are forgetting it's probably a cyclical capex item. Mm. And the productivity gains of AI still lie ahead. Mm. Uh, and I don't think it's been priced as a cyclical stock because earning momentum is still so strong. Right. But if and when this plays out, mm. and you have dollar weakness, tariffs, and so on, normally this results in a boom in emerging markets. Okay. Because then the Indonesians and all also get into the act, and mm. they can start cutting their rates and their commodity prices lift off. Mm. And we are beneficiaries, actually. A lot of Indian earning growth mm. looks low because oil and gas, metals, cement, all have slowed down dramatically. Correct. Correct. So we want inflation in that sense to see profit growth. Mm. No one in the equity market looks at 7% real growth and if there was 7 real plus 7 inflation, you'd get 15% plus, plus, plus. Mm. So it'd be 16, 20% nominal profit growth mm. and we'd be celebrating. Mm. It's bad news for obviously the consumers, which right. is what RBI does. Right. But the way to tackle it may not be through harder mm. rates, but mm. through stronger currency. We'll take a quick commercial break here, but don't go anywhere because Manish is right here. I'm going to come back and continue this special conversation. Samworth 2081. Stay with us.